सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सहवीकवाहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मेदावै शांति योगेन चित्त पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक प्रवर मुनीना पतंजल प्राजलिरान तो आबापुषाकार शंखचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिस श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजल श्रीमते अनंताय नागराजाय नमो नमः श्री कृष्णवागीश यतीश्वराभ्या संप्राप्त चक्रांकण भाष्य सारीनोत्नरंगेन्द्रियत समर्पित स्व गुरुवर्यमीरे विरोधे कार्तिके मासे शतताराकृतोद योगाचार्य कृष्ण मार्यं गुरुवर्यमहं भजे श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः अथ सधि अथ योगाशासन अथ योगाशासनमोगा द्रष्टु स्वरूपे अवस्थान वृत्तिप्यम इतर वृत्तय पंच तय्यः क्लिष्टा क्लिष्टा वृत्तय पंच तय्यः क्लिष्टा क्लिष्टा प्रमाण विपर्यय विकल्प निद्रा स्मृतयः प्रमाण विपर्यय विकल्प स्मृतय प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान आगमा प्रमाणानी प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान आगमा प्रमाणानी विपर्यो मिथ्या अतद्रूप प्रतिष्ठ विपर्यो मिथ्या 
शाब्दानुपाति वस्तु शून्यो विकल्प शुपाति वस्तु शून्यो विकल्प अभाव प्रत्ययालंबना तमो वृत्तिर्निद्रा अभाव प्रत्ययालंबना तमो वृत्तिर्निद्रा अनुभूत विषय असंप्रमोषाह स्मृति अनुभूत विषय असंप्रमोषाह स्मृति अभ्यास वैराग्याभ्यारोध अभ्यास वैराग्याभ्यारोध त्र स्थित यत्नोभ्यास त्र स्थित यत्नोभ्यास तो दीर्घकाल नैरतर्य सत्कार आदरा आसेवि दृढ़भूमि स तो दीर्घकाल नैरतर्य सत्कार आदरा आसेवि दृढ़भूमि दृष्टाश्रविक विषय विदृष्ण से वशीकार संज्ञा वैराग्यम दृष्टाश्रविक विषय विदृष्ण से वशीकार संज्ञा वैराग्यम तत्परम पुषख्याते गुण वै तृष्ण्यम वितर्क विचार आनंद अस्मितारूप अनुगमात संप्रज्ञाता वितर्क विचार आनंद अस्मितारूप अनुगमात संप्रज्ञात विराम प्रत्यय अभ्यासपूर्व संस्कार शेष अराम प्रत्यय अभ्यासपूर्व संस्कार शेष अव प्रत्यय विदेह प्रकृतिलयाना हव प्रत्यो विदेह प्रकृतिलयाना श्रद्धा वीर स्मृति सामधि प्रज्ञा पूर्वक इतरेशा श्रद्धा वीर स्मृति सामधि प्रज्ञा पूर्वक इतरेशा तीव्र संवेगा आसन्न तीव्र संवेगा आसन्न मृदु मध्य अतोपि विशेषः 
मृदु मध्य विशेषर प्रणिधा Settle down into a comfortable posture with your spine erect. Bring your awareness to the breath. Observing from where your breath is born, deep inside the heart space, the pranasthana. Observe how with each inhalation, the breath opens out, expands into the whole body. And with each exhalation, feel the movement of the breath going back into the heart. Relaxing the abdomen, relaxing the chest. And pause for a little while the end of each exhalation and the end of each inhalation. Thank you for chanting along with me. We're going to look at a very important topic today, Shraddha. So it's a huge topic. It's like really the vast ocean and the bottom of the ocean and that which holds everything for us. So I wanted to ask myself, what is that I wanted to share about Shraddha? What is that I want all of us to look at together about Shraddha? And the first thing that comes to my mind is the breath, right? Every time we breathe, because it's an unconscious process, it's something that's happening all the time. And from the moment we are born, from the moment we also become conscious of the breath and say, okay, I can do something with it. There's some power in it. But also we, we allow the breath to just flow, you know, it's just taking care of itself. We don't have to do anything much about it. Sometimes we recognize we have to take care of it. We have to create conditions for this breath to flow very well because it has an impact on our health, on our sense of well-being, on our state of mind, on everything. So once Deskachar, our teacher, shared a very beautiful word. The breath is also called the shvasa. Right? And the word he used is Vishwasa. Vishwasa is faith. Right? Vishwasa is a, a certain conviction, a certain belief or a, a deep kind of a faith. And it is a special breath. V is special, Vishesha breath is Shwasa. So when you are, how he explained it is when you are in the presence of people, whom you trust, when you are in a space that is that allows you to trust completely. You know, I have full faith in this. I'll just do this. Your breath is very, very special at that time. You have to start watching your breath when you are in a space where you can completely trust the flow of your prana. Like whatever my prana is now going to meet, whatever my prana is going to bring back is going to be good for me. Yeah, and when I'm able to trust that, there is a different kind of a flow of the prana and therefore a different kind of a flow of the breath, vishwasa. This idea of vishwasa 
is very strongly connected to also the idea of uh, virya you know the the energy somewhere the prana will pick itself up and start flowing sometimes i might be very very tired and exhausted and you know not really in a frame of mind to do anything and then there is some like a a little light of hope or some just one word or something that i hear and suddenly i don't know from where all the prana will gather itself and you know will be collimated and will be i will be able to direct it in in whatever i want to do if i believe in that if i have that vishwasam in that that's the idea yeah so vishwasa is shraddha and it gives me energy it gives me the virya and the text talk about this idea of vishwasa and the virya from where that energy comes and what is that energy wanting me to direct the prana towards is the words of the teacher the upadesha now i have heard this from uh, desikachar right and every time i am feeling low i want to believe this this word this vishwasa just this word suddenly it awakens my prana suddenly my breath is a different breath it is not the breath the past breath right it's a different breath and then i hold on to this breath and i work with it so that it will help me to gather my energy together and direct it in a meaningful manner in this very moment and also the beauty of the breath is it is what you experience in this moment we can't be with the last breath or the next breath and in this moment what i invest in is really the faith that i will breathe that there will be the next breath the faith that there will be the next breath i have also had the good fortune i should say in some sense to uh watch i haven't seen a baby being born and you know the first breath of the baby the first cry of the baby but i've seen uh death very close the last breath and it's it's very powerful it's extremely powerful fascinating you know that that breath is just now ready to leave the body and even there there is a kind of i mean there could be struggle there is all that in the physical body right i saw it of my own mother but there is a certain beauty in it you know when that that last breath why am i talking about death today because it's as beautiful as everything else in life and one idea of the vishwasa is every step i take forward you know sometimes i have to allow certain parts of me to die only then something more beautiful can be born and that is the faith that is the faith of me stepping forward to let go of what i am hanging on to my possessions the ideas of myself you know the the objects of my raga dvesha abhinivesha primary and that requires that faith that vishwas that's what i want to begin with today <clears throat> the text say bhagavad gita for example in the 17th chapter says we are our shraddha we are defined by our shraddha you know a person by their shraddha it's a very very simple statement okay who am i at any given moment is defined by my shraddha so it means that all of us have shraddha if we are alive when there is prana as long as there is prana there is shraddha yeah but this shraddha may be sometimes blocked hidden dissipated and directed towards many things when i am talking about shraddha in the context of a practitioner of yoga you know an aspirant of yoga it is the shraddha that we invest in wanting to understand the highest reality what is the brahman what is the highest truth who am i that is the shraddha that a first chapter of yoga sutra is talking about which actually keeps my abhyasa and my vairagya alive and strong but everybody has shraddha somebody might have shraddha as 
um, a carpenter or a cook or a, an artist or you know somebody who's a swimmer or you know, anything that you do you you can direct your that energy into that and you never give up the the idea of shraddha is one is to know what it is okay it's very important we think we already know it because we talk so much about it it's a very very subtle feeling you know even in research uh, quite some time ago i think they did some research on this whole idea of the faith factor uh, dr benson i think so the faith factor is like it is uh, discovering that there is something inside me that will change everything about how i am responding to a treatment like the placebo effect you know? so if i have faith in a medicine then that will heal me so they talked about this faith factor and this whole elusive feeling or whatever but it is very 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 subtle it is even beyond the mind i have heard this kachar say several times shraddha is beyond the mind shraddha is beyond the mind so we will discover where is the shraddha so primarily to be able to hold a certain idea which is so subtle which is not something that i can grasp with my senses or my thinking my analytical mind my logical mind right something that's much more than that much deeper than that but i will be able to see it through the way somebody lives their life through the way somebody does their actions in whatever they do you can see that shraddha so it's an invisible factor that is visible at many many levels in the way we speak in the way we listen in the way we walk in the way we do our actions in the way we teach the way we cook we, this quality of shraddha is something that is really visible so it is visible to me which means it is also visible to the world sometimes i can pretend it's possible you know mind can do all these tricks but there is inside me that's a part of me that's saying that i am not sure about this but i'm nodding and saying yeah 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 but i'm not sure about this i'm not sure about it. inside there is a little shakiness of that ground yeah so what it is we need to know for that we need to know what it is not what is not shraddha and that often is only seen in uh, of course the quality of the action itself but the result so when i say like i think it is shraddha i think it is shraddha but then at the end of something i will know maybe it was not fully shraddha maybe there was a lot of raga mis mixed in it, into it added to it when i fail when i don't get acknowledged when i don't uh, i'm not seen you know when I, i i don't receive a certain result as i expected it as i wanted it sukha anushayi raga so shraddha is not raga and very often shraddha is mixed with raga because we are living in the field of avidya kshetram so th there is no uh, possibility that it can be just pure shraddha there will be some amount of raga but to be able to differentiate that separate it out and say yeah there is this amount of raga therefore i got disappointed therefore i got hurt therefore i feel like i want to give it up you know i want to give it up and maybe i want to look for something else now when that point comes i want to give it up and look for something else the dvesha has crept in dukha anushayi dvesha so the ragam has suddenly got converted to dvesha like maybe this teacher is not the right teacher maybe this is not the right practice for me maybe i have to look for something else right now if there is a healthy level of doubt healthy level of skepticism uh, we it will help us to discover our shraddha and strengthen it on our path shraddha also should not be blind that is a very tamasic level of shraddha bhagavad gita talks about rajasik shraddha tamasik shraddha and satvik shraddha so if i am in a tamasic mold you know there is more tamas in my system then i will say i just blindly follow somebody 
to say blindly follow somebody there's something wrong in it okay because it it means that i'm holding on to something and i want that and therefore i'm just ready to go in that direction it can be dangerous also because our shraddha can be molded no? people can actually the way they uh, treat you the way they speak to you the way they teach you they train you they can actually take you in a completely different direction yeah so it can be tamasic it can be rajasic i am putting my shraddha into it so that i will get this so that i will get that you know just completely driven by certain outcome certain need desire whatever to some extent i mean that that's how we are so let's not be in denial of these energies of tamas and rajas yeah sometimes we we just have to follow something to start at least so there is some amount of tamas and we need to look for some result because without that i don't know whether i'm going in the right direction there is some amount of rajas but satvik shraddha has a completely different quality and that is what we need to discover for ourselves and i'm not going to say how or what is that quality of the satvik shraddha i think it is something for us to start observing within ourselves and understand where is this shraddha in the panchamaya model of the taitri upanishad shraddha is part of the vijnana maya it is even beyond the mind so vijnana maya and the ananda maya are somewhere uh, that <clears> the <throat> parts of ourselves which are at a much deeper level beyond the mind we can say <clears throat> beyond the thinking acting analytical logical mind that can remember imagine etc we use that mind but <clears throat> at the vijnana maya level it is the it is like the doer you know, in shankaracharya's commentary on the taitri upanishad he refers to vijnana maya as a karta as a doer so who am i and what i do in my life yeah that is my vijnana maya and each one of us are very unique and special we are very different we gather probably the same kind of knowledge maybe the same teacher or the same school is teaching us but who we are and how we are shaped is very very unique and different and that is actually shown in our action therefore the karta is the vijnana maya right and the head of the karta is shraddha the body is atma the, the body the atma is yoga It says yoga atma and the wings the right and the left parts are the ritam and the satyam and the tail is the higher intelligence the larger universal intelligence which is the mahat the head is shraddha it's like the baby when the baby is born it's the head comes first so in everything shraddha has to be in the forefront of everything so take a pause right now observe your breath for a moment completely exhale trusting that the next breath is coming from the very source of your existence and then draw the breath from deep inside your heart let the breath be born full of that shraddha fill your whole being with it your body your mind every cell hold your breath for a few seconds and then slowly exhale and as you exhale withdraw your attention back into your heart breathing in and breathing out when the mind is quiet one can get in touch with the very source of the breath and draw the strength from that 
Let your prana be filled with this understanding of Shraddha. And that's who we are. Well, waiting to be discovered, strengthened, waiting to flow, expand and express itself in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, in the way we live our life moment to moment. I don't know how I got muted. Sorry. <laughs> you can wake up now. Something else is working. Okay. In the Yoga Sutra, Shraddha is called Upaya Pratyaya. This is in the commentary to the Yoga Sutra. So there are two kinds of people, two kinds of, um, I would say, um, ways in which you reach the state of yoga. One is the people who are already born with a certain quality. They have a very strong shraddha. They, they have a very quiet mind. The mind is predominant with the sattva, the sattvic quality. And therefore there's great clarity and understanding. And for such a mind, it is not a big deal. The chitta vritti nirodha is just a matter of a little more practice and patience. But for the rest of us, so those people are called the bhava pratyaya. For rest of us, it is upaya pratyaya, that I need some upayam. I need something that will take me towards the goal. And shraddha is the upayam. Shraddha is the means that will help me to take me to the goal. And this shraddha will strengthen my abhyasa, my effort to stay with everything that I need, my practices, my attitude, everything that will help me to stay on the path of yoga and vairagya, that which will give me the clarity to know what has to fall away. And the abhyasa, the stronger it is, the stronger the vairagya. So the upaya pratyaya, it shraddha also the stronger the shraddha, the faster you reach the goal. Tivra Samvegana Asana. Patanjali is also saying Shraddha can be in different intensities. Mridhumadhyadi Matra. It can be weak sometimes. 
it can be moderate, it can be very, very intense for the same person and for different people. So because Shraddha is not the same all the time for all of us, Patanjali offers another tool, Ishwara Pranidhana. But the interesting thing is without Shraddha, even Ishwara Pranidhana is not possible. You cannot have faith in something higher without that quality of Shraddha. But I can invest my Shraddha in the Ishwara or in the words of the teacher or in the words of the scriptures, whatever that might be, because I myself feel that I don't have the strength within me. So at least when we don't feel strong enough, when we, we feel bogged down, when we feel pressurized, when there's just too much happening, we don't have the strength, at least I should have enough Shraddha to hook on to something outside of me. At least the idea is something outside of me. Could be the words of my teacher, listening to a chant, or just being in the presence of uh, somebody or prayer or whatever that might be, that will help me to activate that Shraddha within me. So that's the idea in Yoga Sutra. So it's very, very important for all of us as practitioners because we are living in this world. We are on a roller coaster ride. There is plenty of Rajas and Tamas in our system and outside of us. We cannot perpetually be in a sattvic environment and only eat sattvic food and only have sattvic people around us. It's not happening. Because sattva to some extent is boring. So we need excitement, we need a lot of color and you know, all those things. So Rajas and Tamas will come. White absorbs all the colors, but it is the red and the black and all those that create that excitement, right? So having said that, we need to cultivate the Shraddha, this, this little seedling inside us. Sometimes it's very strong, sometimes it's not so strong. It needs to be protected. It needs to be cultivated. So we need to know what its obstacles are for ourselves. Each one of us with our propensity, our constitution and our personality, we may have certain things which are greater obstacle for us than some other things. Some people, it can, it can be sensory indulgence. Some people, it can be doubt. Some people, it can be uh, strong emotions. Or some people, it can be past memories that cloud us. We keep going back to it and reliving our victimhood. That doesn't let us connect to the present moment. Right? And what potential is there in this moment that we can draw from. So we need to understand our own obstacles. We also need to understand what awakens our shraddha, what strengthens it. So how can I cultivate it? What do I nurture the seed with? And this again can be very unique for each one of us. You know, for some of us, it is chanting. Could be just listening to chanting. Sometimes it's actually sitting down and just chanting something. I may not have a great voice. I may not even know this chant. I may not even know the meaning, but let me just chant. And the sound of the chant, that reverberation of that sound and the power of it might shift something in my prana, might at least clear out some of the tamasic energy in my system. And then it might give me some more, you know, just, just physical energy, you know, to get up and move and do my practice or just get up from the bed and, you know, go and have a cup of tea, whatever that might be, I, I just need to move. And I need to find that one thing that will help me and use that as an anchorage. So in our practice, to discover that and to stay with it, it could be something that you stay with for enough time to make that into a habit. Say every time I feel weak, I can go back to this. I can use this. Yeah, for me, it is some, um, it, it is two things. One is actually chanting or listening to chanting. And when I'm listening to chanting, I, I try to visualize my teacher chanting, chanting for me. And that awakens my shraddha. And sometimes it's for me listening to 
uh, a discourse can be listening to jay krishna murthy or tiknat han or my vedanta teacher right something that shifts inside you say yeah that's something it sort of helps to clear the clouds a little bit reduce the heaviness a little bit and so that that idea of shravanam listening it's a very powerful idea because the sound has a certain power to awaken something very very deep something very very primordial so the idea of smriti shraddha virya smriti smriti is also the original goal the memory of the original goal then i need to remember why i am here what is the purpose of my life that i am here to discover something about myself to understand myself what i see as myself is not who i am because it is meeting suffering all the time it is not able to handle all the problems of life so there must be something more there must be something greater that i want to discover and that memory of that goal has to be awakened yeah that is the memory and that may sometimes be hidden in the words of the teacher so therefore shraddha is often related to the apta the words of the teacher in yoga sutra it talks about pratyaksha anumana and agaman three ways of pramana pratyaksha is direct understanding anumana is through inference i have some direct experience and the rest of it i infer but agama is the words of the teacher now there are many many things at very very subtle levels that you cannot experience in pratyaksha yeah a, a beginning student a student who's just starting the journey of yoga somebody who comes for therapy and you give them a very simple practice maybe they have gone to 10 different doctors they've told them how complicated the problem is and you teach them some simple breathing exercise some simple movement how would they have shraddha in what you're teaching because it's so simple and the complicated mind cannot fathom that something so complicated we all like to have complicated problems right we all like to have these fantastic terminologies behind our symptoms and that's who we are we become that and then if somebody say just breathe and do this movement something will happen how can i have shraddha because i have not experienced it right the student has not experienced they obviously cannot have it but if they have some faith in the teacher in the teachings maybe the teacher also is new yeah i am just a new teacher how will the student know me for them to have faith in me so if my teacher or my teacher's teacher or the lineage or the original teacher if that student has some faith in yoga itself as a system then something can be awakened then they do their practice they do their practice and then they feel something something has shifted for them and sometimes it's just a moment it's like one moment and it's very beautiful to discover that moment and sometimes that moment also you lose it because all samskaras take over no rajas and tamas takes over it dissolves it then again and again and again i revisit that and i build on that like particle after particle after particle has to be built on till it becomes a force and sometimes it takes many many years i i can tell you for myself it took for me many years to develop that shraddha in yoga itself it didn't happen overnight i didn't come to yoga with full faith in what is i didn't even know what is yoga i just came to work in a yoga institute so my shraddha built over a period of time through my own illness and healing through watching people healing slowly it built and then i don't know when that happened that for me this is the ground for everything like i have absolute faith in it i it's like there's no doubt but the method the tools i have to discover i don't know exactly this is what will work for somebody so sometimes i don't even know what tools to use for somebody you know i have to observe carefully i have to listen carefully then i have to trust i have to pray and say i don't know but there's something that has to work through me for the student because the student has come back with this amount this amount of faith so let that work through me so i have to trust that ishwara or you know the teachings that the generations of teachers have left within us 
that mm -hmm. Upadesha that's there silently, you know, the silent teacher inside that's waiting to teach you and allow your mind to be quiet, you know. Only when your mind is quiet can the teacher's teaching can be heard. And sometimes you don't even hear it, you just do something and something happens. Right? So this idea of apta, that faith in the teacher, is something that probably some people have a lot. Some of us, we have a very skeptical mind, which is great, which is beautiful. But when we start experiencing it, to be able to hold on to it is very important. Some people want data. We want research data to prove that it will work. You know, it's very sad. Sometimes people come with certain condition and they're saying, have you data to prove that yoga will cure this condition or heal this condition or make me feel better? If you have the data, then I will practice. Unfortunately, we haven't gathered much of that data. And we should be probably for such minds, you know, that such minds can hold on to something. And I also have a scientific mind and I also want to, I also want to see that. It's not that yoga, I don't want to prove yoga. I want to prove how yoga works. What are the ingredients that go into the healing process? And it is not just some kind of a chemical process. It's, it's a, it's a much deeper process and Shraddha is the catalyst for any form of healing, any form of healing. Even for somebody to move from seven out of 10 pain to six and a half out of 10 pain, Shraddha is there because that only that will make them practice. If there is no Shraddha, even a little bit of amount of Shraddha, nobody is going to practice. They will take the sheet home and they will look at it. Yeah, I have to do it. My teacher said I have to do it. I believe in this teacher. I believe in yoga. Everybody believes in yoga. Most people believe in yoga. But we have to practice. Huh? And to practice, there is that little energy, that push that has to happen. Maybe I practice one day. I feel good. I go back. I forget. So that practice has to be consistent. So Shraddha has to be cultivated. And as teachers, we also have to learn how to cultivate it for the student. How to, how to help them cultivate it. And for that, we need to discover our own Shraddha and see how we need to make it better. Yeah. So I'm going to stop here just with a few ideas on how to cultivate the Shraddha. We can look at cultivating the Shraddha to take care of our body through food, through asana practice that will take us towards greater level of sthiram and sukham, stability. Now, why is Vijnanamaya the, the body is yoga? You know, this whole part that's between my throat and my, uh, the base of my spine, that whole part has to have steadiness and it has to be comfortable. All the vital organs are there. So when there is steadiness, there is a certain rhythm that takes care of your breathing, your heart, functioning, your digestion, all the other functions. And that steadiness of your body is actually going to be reflected in the steadiness of your arms, your feet, and your mind. Yeah. So at the level of the body, the more we are able to discover sthiram and sukham, we are able to cultivate a certain relationship of infusing that shraddha in taking care of our body. The Shraddha in breath is defined by the quality of Dirgha and Sukshma. How subtle my breath is. There's no force. There's no pulling and pushing and struggling with the breath. Just let it flow. Right? Flow with a certain quality of quietness. Like a very quiet river. It's flowing. That's a quality of Shraddha we bring into our breath. And when the breath becomes more and more subtle and deep, that will help us to connect to the Shraddha, the within us. With the mind, it is cultivating a sattvic mind. A mind that is steady and stable, not shaky, not running after a hundred things, not indulgent, 
you know, when the rajasic and the tamasic qualities come down in the mind, there is a certain clarity, lightness and stability that comes in the mind. A mind that can reflect to me a reality better and better. So how do I know that I'm cultivating my Shraddha? I will know it by the quality of my asana practice, the quality of my pranayama practice, by the quality of the way I live my life. My mind is everywhere, not just in my meditation, right? The way I live my life, the way I do my action, the way I relate to people, the way I listen, the way I understand what my prana is carrying, the way I work on purifying myself, that reflects my shraddha. So the yama niyamas cannot be practiced without shraddha. And with, when we practice them, the shraddha is strengthened. So it's like the, uh, say, you know, if I have this, then this will happen. But when this happens, this will get strengthened. So we have to begin somewhere. If a student says, I have only five minutes, give them something for five minutes, even though five minutes is nothing in 24 hours for them to change their samskara. But that five minutes might expand to seven minutes, to 10 minutes, to 15 minutes longer. Start somewhere and start where the student is, not the idea of where they already should be. This is very important for a yoga teacher. We have done our practice. We have fallen, got up. We have got bruised. We have gone through all this drama to discover something more. But somebody who's coming for the first time, don't expect them to come with a lot of faith, a lot of understanding, a lot of awareness. Let's not expect him. They're coming. That's great. Somebody is coming. You say, thank you for coming because I can't teach when I don't have a student. I have to say, thank you all for coming today. On Vijayadashami day, early morning, thank you for coming because if you're not there, I can't do this, right? So that kind of reverence is very important that we build for a student. See that person as our equal. I, I may have traversed a path a little longer, but they have lived their life. It's not just the age, you know, we don't know what that person is carrying. So how do we bring Shraddha into our teaching is a very, very important idea. If, it is, if my teaching is driven by what am I going to get out of it? Am I going to be seen as a good teacher? Am I going to get other material benefits out of it? All this is important. It keeps us alive. It is very important. But there's something more that needs to drive us. What will drive me to come into a class? What is that something more? And how do we cultivate that? How do we strengthen that? I leave it to all of us to go back and work with it. Every day morning, on the teaching days, I hope, hopefully there are days when you're not teaching, when you can just work with yourself, <laughs> only, only with ourselves and the family and all that. But on teaching days, just two minutes before you start your class, get in touch with that little seed inside you. That little seed, sometimes you think it is very strong, but sometimes it just minimized itself into very, very tiny, very, very weak seedling. And just put a little protective fencing over it. Work with your breath so you can empower that little one. Because that little one has the power to empower millions of people in the world. eight o'clock, we'll do a pranayama practice, okay, on Shraddha. So I'm going to chant the Shraddha Suktam, some of you know it. I'm not going to get into the meanings today, but we'll do a pranayama practice. So there are uh, six passages. When I chant the first line, you inhale, okay? Then when I pause, you chant that line or just Pause. I'm going to chant it two times. No. Yeah, I'm going to chant it two times. So the second time I chant softly, you hold your breath. You go back to that seat. 
So when I start chanting, you awaken your breath, you go into that little space in your heart. Then you chant mentally on hold after inhale. Then you exhale. Then you chant mentally hold after exhale. Okay. So you can do Nadi Shodhana or Ujjayi, whatever you're comfortable with, Anlom Ujjayi. But let, let, let's not get carried away by the technique. And if the breath is too short or too long, just stay with the rhythm. And, or just work with your own breath and listen to them. Okay? The action or the technique is not so important. The bhavana is very important. Okay, so take a moment to stabilize your posture. Connect with your natural breath. Connect with the space deep inside your heart, the center of the chest, just above the diaphragm. Exhale completely. Om Shraddha Yagne Samedhyate Om Shraddha Yagne Samedhyate Shraddhaya Vindate Havi Shraddhaya Vindate Havi Shraddham Bhagasya Murdhani Shraddham Bhagasya Murdhani Vachasa Vedaya Masi Vachasa Vedaya Masi Priyaga Shraddhe Dadataha Priyaga Shraddhe Dadataha Priyaga Shraddhe Didasataha Priyaga Shraddhe Didasataha Priyam Bhoje Shuyajvasu Priyam Bhoje Shuyajvasu Idam Oditam Kridhi Idam Oditam Kridhi Yatha Deva Asureshu Yatha Deva Asureshu Shraddha Mugreshu Chakrire Shraddha Mugreshu Chakrire Evam Bhoje Shuyajvasu 
ಅಸ್ಮಕಮುದಿತಂಕೃಧಿ ಅಸ್ಮಕಮುದಿತಂಕೃಧಿ ಶ್ರಧಾಂದೇವಾಯಜಮಾನ ಶ್ರಧಾಂದೇವಾಯಜಮಾನ ವಾಯೋರ್ಗೋಪಾಸತೆ ವಾಯೋರ್ಗೋಪಾಸತೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಗುಂ ಹೃದಯಕೂತ್ಯ ಶ್ರಧಾಗುಂ ಹೃದಯಕೂತ್ಯ ಶ್ರಧಯ ಹೂಯತೆ ಹವಿ ಶ್ರಧಯ ಹೂಯತೆ ಹವಿ ಶ್ರಧಾಂ ಪ್ರಾತರ್ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಂ ಪ್ರಾತರ್ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಂಧ್ಯಂದಿನ ಪರಿ ಶ್ರಧಾಂಧ್ಯಂದಿನ ಪರಿ ಶ್ರಧಾಗು ಸೂರ್ಯ ನೃಚಿ ಶ್ರಧಾಗು ಸೂರ್ಯ ನೃಚಿ ಶ್ರಧೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಪಯೇಹಮ ಶ್ರಧೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಪಯೇಹಮ ಶ್ರಧಾಧಿವಸ್ತೆ ಶ್ರಧಾಧಿವಸ್ತೆ ಶ್ರಧಾ ವಿಶ್ವಿದಂಜಗತ್ ಶ್ರಧಾ ವಿಶ್ವಿದಂಜಗತ್ ಶ್ರಧಾಂಕಾಮರ ಶ್ರಧಾಂಕಾಮರ ಹವಿಷಾವರ್ಧಯಾಮಸಿ ಹವಿಷಾವರ್ಧಯಾಮಸಿ I can awaken and deepen and strengthen my shraddha by bringing my mind back to my body and my breath, by being attentive, by completely trying to get myself into this moment. Like the attention of the mother for her child. Can I come back and again and again and again into my practice? 
into whatever I can hold on to that will build and strengthen my strength. Even a tiny, tiny streak of light of the sunlight can awaken the seed and let it grow and move towards the light. And as we move towards the light within us, know that we're all together. We have the teachers, we have the teachings, we have the Sangha, we have our breath, we have this beautiful body, we have this earth that supports us. Just knowing that and remembering that is enough. Even a mighty river is born from tiny droplets from the spring. To trust that Shraddha is in everyone. And as a practitioner and as a teacher, my job is just to create conditions for that to be strengthened, for that to grow, and for that to not just inspire myself, but to change the world in whatever small or big ways. Wishing you a wonderful year ahead of study, of practice, of reflection, of working together, of reaching out to more and more people who need yoga in the way that they can receive practice and nourish themselves. To just part quietly. There's no need to say anything. Just go back and work with the seat. Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Pratyurma Amritam Gamaya Shanti Shanti Shanti